I'm Stu McConey, you're listening to Six Music, and it is right now time, I'm delighted, so for this... First, last everything, where we ask people about their first musical loves, their last, most current musical loves, and something that means everything to them, as well as finding out what they are up to at the moment. And I'm delighted that this morning I'm joined by James Dean Bradfield. Hi, James. Hi there, Stu. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm all coffeeed up on a Sunday morning. Great. There you go. Great. We're going to talk a lot about your new record, Even in Exile, which I think is absolutely fantastic, um, as well as talking about your musical loves. Um, for, for, let's, let's say a little, just at the outset, about Even in Exile, your new solo album. For people who, who, who don't know, it is inspired by the life and work of Victor Hara. For, for people who don't know, in a nutshell, who was Victor Hara? Uh, Victor Hara uh, was uh, a man uh, that came, what you might call from the peasant class, from a plantation um, in Chile, and he kind of rose to, uh, to become one of Chile's favourite singer-songwriters. Some people called him a protest singer, but he preferred the term revolutionary singer. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, kind of, yeah, he became part of the fab- fabric of Chilean culture, counterculture, um, and its political landscape. And then he was brutally murdered by the Pinochet coup in 1973. Absolutely, yeah. And Even in Exile takes is uh, based around... Uh, uh, no, it's not a literal narrative of his life. It's inspired by his life, but inspired by uh, lyrics and poems that you were given by uh, by Patrick, by Patrick Jones, Nicky Wise, Nicky Wise's brother, who is a poet uh, uh, and a writer. And um, and you, you obviously... did you Were you familiar with Victor Hara, very familiar with him before getting these lyrics? I think, you know, myself and you just are, are so aware of how much we heard Victor Hara's um, name in the 80s. Yeah. We heard it in so many songs, in Working Week songs, in Clash songs, in U2 songs. You know, Simple Minds said their album was inspired by him. Robert Wyatt did covers of Victor Hara songs. It was a song that really kind of came to have a lot more resonant currency again in the 80s. Yeah. Um, so being a kid of the 80s, you just already knew about him. And cut to the chase, three years ago, Patrick Jones, Nicky Wise's brother, um, I think he was writing another play at the time, and I popped into his house, as I do once a week, and um, he was just writing lots of prose and poetry about Victor Hara. As an emotional exercise, I think he was writing about something alongside a new play yeah. to try and get himself going. And he, he wanted to write something that was pure, and that, about something that was pure and good. So he's just writing about Victor Hara as an emotional exercise. And, um, and when... He made it clear that he wasn't going to release any of this. Of course, kind of um, the musician that needs lyrics <laughs> yeah. like, started eyeing him like a hungry wolf. You know, <laughs> take some of this away with me, please. And at that point, um, the Mannix had taken a break. We definitely had said that we weren't going to release a record for three years. Right. Um, so I was just uh, subconsciously, I was, I was definitely looking for something. Okay. It's a fantastic record. We're going to play some of it a bit later on. Uh, right now, though, and we'll talk more about it in a moment. Right now, though, your first musical love that we've asked you about, I don't know if it's your first acquisition, My Old Piano by Diana Ross from a brilliant album, Diana. How, yes. Yeah, was, tell us about this. Um, yeah, it was, it was either going to be um, uh, Pinky and Perky Have a Party, which was the first record <laughs> which was bought for me. Yeah. It's quite an emotional kind of, um, it's quite an, emo- quite an emotional memory, actually. Yeah. That for me. Um, but the first record I bought myself. Uh, in Martin Luther Records in Blackwood in 1980 was My Old Piano by Diana Ross. And it was the first time, apart from ELO or the Nolan Sisters, where I just taped something off the radio and I listened to it again and again and again and again. Um, And so much so that at this point, I'm 11 years old, and I'm kind of walking to Blackwood from Pontland Fife every Saturday to go to Woolworths and stuff. And uh, I had made the the decision at 11 that I could buy my own records now. Um, and that, that was the first time that kind of um, I thought that, uh, no, I can't keep taping this off Radio Luxembourg or, or Radio <laughs> One. I've got to have the copy. And uh, yeah, I went and bought it. It was that first song that was just a year worm was just absolutely just, I knew it would never leave me. Well, here it is 1980, Diana Ross, my old piano. <laughs> Brilliant, that record is changed. My old piano, Diana Ross, which um, 
It's just had three amazing singles off that album as well. There are, aren't there? Uh, I mean, I, I'm Upside Down. Yeah. That's the biggest album ever. And of I course, mean, produced by Nile Rodgers and uh, Nile Rodgers now. Isn't yeah, it? I was going to say, with all due respect to Diana Ross, who is a legend, it's in all but name a Chic record, isn't it? Which is, fun, which is fantastic. One of the, one of the, I saw you and Chic within quick succession with Saturday night in a big tent at. Um, uh, festival oh, number God, six. Yeah. As I a mean, night yeah, out, um, that's going to be hard to beat. Do you remember that? <laughs> I got. I got to say, uh, going on after Chic is quite a tough task <laughs> because everybody. I mean, it, you know, just imagine I'm in the audience and I'm just going, "Go on, play," because he plays lots of stuff that have been hits that he's produced. So sometimes he'll play my old piano and stuff. Yeah, and um, and you just I'm, I'm there in the audience and I'm going. I want to dance, and I'm just an awful dad dancer. <laughs> what hope have I got of following this? <laughs> it's really hard. Well, you did. It was a great night. I think any of us, all of us who were there, thought it was a fantastic night at, at Saturday night at Festival Number Six. Um, we're talking to James about to first, last, everything music clubs. We're also talking about Even in Exile, his new uh, album based around the life of Victor Hara. What strikes me, uh, why I think people will absolutely love this record, from my point of view, why I love it is if you are a fan, as you know, I'm a massive fan of the Manic Street Preachers, you you will hear that clearly. You know that there is something for the people who love the Manic Street Preachers. I think there's also quite a lot of your own particular stuff, though, isn't there? In the fact that there's, I can hear some. Italian soundtracky things in there. I can hear some proggy things in there. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, there is. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I decided to just let the influences just just pour through yeah. me on this record because I didn't want to go down the the route of 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 trying to incorporate you know Chilean sounds or Chilean yeah. musicians or instruments. So I, I, when you start questioning your instinct, I think that's when things go wrong. So. When the the prog influence started coming through in some of the tracks, I questioned it for a second and nah. then I just carried on. Because I, I now looking back and yeah, perhaps the prog thing came through because of the times I was dealing with, you know, it's kind of a loose period of sixty eight to seventy three, really, a lot of the songs mm. based in. And um yeah, you had a lot of man in there, you know, yeah. Wales is probably most uh, kind of the best kind of prog prog band. Um, big fan of Man. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of Rush came through there. Yeah. A bit of Mountain. We were nearly prog sometimes, yeah. but not quite. Um, uh, and then a bit of uh, metal era Pink Floyd as well came through, which is probably my favourite Pink Floyd album for some reason. It's great. So yeah, that started coming through. I'm uh, um, coming through, and then um, I always get this wrong. Alessandro Alessandroni is it? I'm Alessandro from- Alessandroni. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a hard one to do. And- <laughs> a lot of it, because I've got a couple of his records, um, which they've issued like quite, you know, um, um, they've done quite a lot of reruns of his records um, over the last 10 years or so. And, um, of course, kind of, when it came to covering one of uh, Victor Hara's songs, um, La Partida, um, I went straight to the the vista of the the, the, the wide kind of Atacama Desert. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, and that, that became a bit Spaghetti Western, which sounds corny, but for me it just worked, you know? And all those things did come through. Stuff like the Bad Plus... Yeah, um, it was like one of my favorite, like you know, kind of modern like American jazz experiments that came through a bit on stuff like "There Will Come a War." Um, it was always Sean's, uh, Sean Moore's fault that I liked jazz because he was in Gwent Jazz Youth, Youth Orchestra when he was young. Um, so kind of all those things came through. But I think the main thing that, that that affects the record is not just the subject matter, but is not having to write a single. Um, yeah, you know, I've been taught to write three, four singles per album all my life, which is why I think Manchester Preachers have, have been a really productive group. You know, all the groups I, I grew up listening to had great singles, and yeah. that's what's driven the Manchester Preachers. Um, but experiencing for the first time not having to write a single really freed, us, freed me up. I think. Right. Well, there, there are great singles on this. We're going we're gonna to play one a little later on, but it is, it is as you say, much more than that, and we'll play, play something from Even in Exile a bit later on. Tell me about Salt, James, a recent enthusiasm of yours. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, along with a lot of other people, I've uh, kind of I've never really downloaded much, but I've I've been forced to lately, kind of thing. <laughs> um, I know it's kind of like uh, even, it happens to fifty-one-year-olds as well. You told me not uh, that long ago that you'd never sent an email. No, 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 that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but kind of yes, so kind of uh, during lockdown, I was turned into quite a lot of exercise. And um, I just needed a lot more records to listen to because I was listening to more more music than usual, which is a lot anyway. And um, I tripped upon a track called Wildfires on the radio, 
And it just really intrigued me. It was so bare, so minimal. Uh, the performance was so restrained. And then I realized it was by Salt and I, I knew what Salt were about. So I got, I got into the record and yeah, it's, it's like the opposite of Victor Hara. Victor Hara was like famed for obviously having a protest angle in his music, but being very empathetic and not really that, that aggressive. Well, the Salt record has a definite polemic in it yeah. you know, with packs like Hard Life and um, Stop Them and Eternal Life, you know, this de- yeah. there's, defi- there's a definite polemic in there which links in with Black Lives Matter, etc. Yeah. Um, but then this one track is different to the rest um, because this track is obviously about, you know, when you hear the lyric, um, you know, take off your badge, you know what the lyric is about. Um, but it's this track isn't, isn't, hasn't got that hard, aggressive polemic like the other songs. Yeah. This is more like a silent court of justice, um, this song. Um, and it's, it, it, it describes how everything sprang from that fateful event in America and, how, yeah. and the protests that have come from it. But it does it in a beautifully eloquent way. And I suppose that's, that tells you everything about music that can be loosely um, labelled as having an element of protest about it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's got to be angry, but it's got, to, it's got to have eloquence for it to be convincing too. And I think, you know, Wildfires especially does have that eloquence. Our guest this morning on First Last Everything is James Dean Bradfield, whose new solo album, second solo album, Even in Exile, uh, is, is terrific, and I urge you all to, to get it and listen to it. Uh, I'm going to play a track from it in a little while, but f- for now, James, let's quickly, before we talk more about your solo album, finish with a track from it, let's talk about Simple Minds, who I, 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 this didn't surprise me that you picked something from Simple Minds as your everything. Did, did they, at what point in your life did this become a thing for you? Um, well, I've kind of, you know, um, I've kind of Diana Ross, obviously, bought in 1980, as I said, when it came out. And then it's getting to around about 1984, where I'm starting to kind of really kind of um, read the music press, sounds, enemy, melody maker. So I'm starting to get into more indie side of things, apart from Tamla and, and metal and stuff yeah. and everything. And uh, kind of, so some of mine's just really strike me. I don't know why they just do. Um, and so I'm playing catch up by now. I, I can't remember why I got into Simple Minds, um, but around about 1985, 86, when I'm 15, 16, uh, I start buying their back catalog. Um, right. uh, oh, that's because I bought Sparkle in the Rain. Yeah. Um, so you get into a band and then you start, you start, you start, you know, tracing back yeah. for the back catalog. And I bought Empires and Dance. And I think it's probably still one of the most important records in my collection completely because. It just shows that kind of thing that Nick and Richie always encouraged in, in our band to have that freedom of imagination, but be very disciplined as well. It's just like, you know, it's a really hard mixture, I think. Mm-hmm. And, and I think Empires and Dance does that, you know, for Scottish working class lads to be, you know, writing lyrics about Bada Mine Off, kind of Red Brigade bombed Europe, and to be talking about that post, post, post war generation and trying mm-hmm. to find their place in it. But in you know the, the Acropolis, you know, kind of on the cover with a chipped statue of an RAF major on on the cover with the Cyrillic writing. Yeah, and I travel. It's just the sound of a of a young, ambitious working class kid just traveling through Europe with a rail card and and just trying to make sense of being Europe, the European, let yeah. alone being yourself. And, and like I said, it's the freedom of imagination, but the discipline to put it all together. It's just amazing. I travel simple minds chosen for us as an everything uh, by James Dean Bradfield. Um, I, you're so right what you're saying there, James. There was that period just then. I guess it may have been the last bits of a benevolent welfare state when working class kids, when everything was possible, wasn't it? You know, there was a real chance that it's very relevant this week, I think. There was a chance that the great adventure of life was possible for you. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's talked about in lots of different countries, that little period where there is access to kind of having... Um, the liberty to be bored and just find your own way yeah. in life and, and to use your imagination. You know, you've got that, the stories about when uh, John Cale first went to New York and they would just find places in downtown New York in Soho. And if they saw AIR outside, it meant art, artist in residence. Yeah. And they would just use the place as, as, as you know, they were just, um, they, they were just slums that they would just, you know, yeah. uh, just go in and stay in and, and just uh, so kind of, you know, yeah, that kind of culture. You know, whether in Britain or America, is kind of this period where you can have that room to breathe and find yourself. Sure. Tell me quickly about lockdown. I know you've been keeping busy. You've been doing crosswords. 
<laughs> You've been compiling your own crosswords, haven't you? Yeah, it's getting a bit racy, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so far, well, which ones have I done? I have You've done, done Scottish pop music. I've done Scottish pop music. I've done a, a, a generic um, 80s, in, uh, 80s indie, uh, which was called Collier's Corner, because um, a guitar tech, Kerry Collier, is a okay. massive, massive... Uh, uh, kind of authority on the 80s indie. Um, I've done a David Bowie one, which took in his stage career, his film career, his music career. Um, where else? Welsh chart music. Um, don't do any jokes. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of like um, uh, AOR, MOR one, um, an anthem one. So, yeah, I'm on the road. Uh, so my book of crosswords. Um, can I, anybody wants to publish it, get in, get, get in touch. Well, absolutely. Anyone <laughs> wants to publish James. I know someone who's just launching a music imprint. If you're listening, Pete, get in touch for James's crossword. Um, and um, I'm going to get you into cryptic crosswords now. I know you're being resistant to No, cryptic. no, I can't do that. I can't do that. You no. will. You've just got to learn the ropes. I'll get you into it. <laughs> once you're in there, once you've learned the little clues and ropes, it's, it's good. You'll get into it. Um, even in Exile is a brilliant record. It is out now. It's James's second solo album. It is just, it's, it's tremendous. We're going to play, uh, next week or the week after, we'll play the last song, which is currently my favourite track on it. It's kind of the epic denouement. But I think without knowing the end is, uh, if we still call things such things, the new single. Is that right, James? Yes, it is, yeah. Um, I suppose this one has a, a touch of um, more manics about it, I suppose. Um, and it's a lyric which is... More about Joan Harder, um, his wife and widow, uh, than anything else. And and part of the, you know the record, there are tracks on the album where it's about the people that built Victor Hara. Um, yeah. Always that it's always that thing when people say you know people are self-made. Barely anyone is ever self-made. Absolutely. You know? His mother made him. You know his wife made him. Violetta Parra, the famous singer, songwriter, and kind of cultural archivist of Chile, she made him too. Um, so yeah, this song, John, um, without knowing the end, is about his wife and widow and under her commitment to the physical act of just being brave. Always lovely to talk, James. I was very sad the other week when on my phone an alert popped up that that night I was supposed to go and see you and British Sea Power in Halifax, but oh god, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, kind of peace all. I can't. I, it's that place in, in Halifax, I didn't even know existed. It's amazing. Actual, but... I know Halifax existed, but Peace Hall, it just, just doesn't look like Britain. No, it's it doesn't. Amazing. And I'm hoping you can reschedule that gig at some point. Yeah, Hopefully, so. yeah. I can't wait to play that gig. Great. You know, I, I, I really would love to, you know. When we, nobody will ever, ever take walking on stage, you know, for granted ever again. You know, never will I say on a Monday night, <laughs> might be a struggle, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that's, that's great. Um, let's see you soon, I hope, mate. All right, take care, man. Bye-bye.